Let me now turn to you, uh, Juliette, Dr. Juliette Twakli, with, um, I expect, an African perspective. Please. Thank you, Prof. Indeed, when the COVID-19 uh, pandemic began, two things became very obvious very clearly to some of us who were located on the African continent. One was that the West seemed to have huge capacity, but little strategy. And we in Africa had a lot of strategy and little capacity. The second thing that was obvious was the importance of health as an important national strategic asset within our economies. The pandemic highlighted, has, as has been mentioned, health inequities that have been ongoing. Also, some other weaknesses in our systems, such as insufficiencies, inequalities, inequities, insufficiencies, and ineffective systems, as well as weak regional and domestic financing systems in order to procure appropriate medications and vaccines, etc., and the presence of often very asynchronous health regulatory policies throughout the continent. So each country in the continent had a different system to somebody else's, different levels of regulation. It was very hard initially to work together. There was also a recognition, I think, as we dealt with the pandemic, having already dealt with Ebola, that Africa and how we responded to this pandemic represented an important strategic shift in health governance. And we were slowly acquiring what I might call a soft power rather than a hard power in negotiating around health governance issues. The role of philanthropies and civic societies in the health arena was also enormously important. United Way Worldwide, which I chair, raised over a billion dollars during the course of the past one and a half years, helping over 27 million people who were affected by the pandemic. This is not just in health, but allied to health needs. And I think yesterday, uh, Honorable Amino, Aminatu Toure mentioned the recognition of Africa and Africans' own capabilities and the lack thereof, and some degree of confidence in recognizing it was now time for us to man up, so to speak, and start manufacturing our own medical pharmaceuticals and start developing medical programs and policies that work for us specifically. In addition, I think looking at the global stage, it's important that it's not just that we partner with other groups and agencies, but that we have equal status within those relationships. There has to be some equity in the partnerships here on in terms of health and health governance for us to be able to effectively be part of the solution and not part just of the problem within Africa regarding world health. I think that um, the local manufacture of pharmaceuticals has already begun. Um, I have to give a nod to the Louis Pasteur Institute in Senegal who have been doing enormous work, very impressive work, and serve as a beacon to many others. I think we also need more investment locally, and um, probably more in some of our public health initiatives on site rather than externally. When one looks at the ratio of the monies that were actually given to Africa compared to what was raised for the world, we actually receive very little and of the COVAX 
initiative, we've only received a fifth, one fifth of the vaccines that were originally pledged. So whilst people cite us for not having vaccinated enough persons on the continent, one must remember we haven't received anywhere near as many vaccines as we had anticipated. And finally, I would like here to say that this has been an excellent opportunity for recognition of the role of the diaspora of Africa in various capacities and in various roles. We have partnered in many of the global health initiatives that have occurred on the continent. We are moving into important areas that impact global governance, uh, global health governance, particularly in Africa. And here I am thinking of people such as my friend and sister, Ngozi Okonjo-Iwala, at the head of the World Trade Organization. But I must also cite locally placed African diaspora, such as Dr. Nkeke Zong, who ran an enormously effective African CDC on the, the continent itself, and was largely very responsible for the effects efficiency with which we were able to work in Africa dealing with this pandemic. And then, of course, myself in both the medical and philanthropic uh, arena, trying to coordinate both. But there are many more of us, and I think that we have to be recognized more as Africans themselves need to be recognized more on the global health arena. Thank you very much, uh, Juliette, and thank you for emphasizing how Remarkably, Africa as a continent came together in <clears throat> building the response. And also, thank you for uh, focusing on how partnerships, be them private, public, or private, public, and of course, when it comes to governance at the global level, should be inclusive from the start. Um, that's certainly uh, a lesson that we had learned before, but we hadn't taken from HIV, from SARS, from Ebola. Uh, 